in the air as the Habitapa Dirt Racing Series makes the North Georgia Mountains echo with its powerful charge to the season's close. A $10,000 to win North Georgia Speedway 100 lap event near Chatsworth, Georgia holds promise and redemption. The last step to a season's crowning battle, the seventh annual Habitat Shootout. For the National Points League, it's one more chance to bring a whole season much needed success and hope for the future. Buckle up, your ride with the Habitat Dirt Racing Series is about to begin. It's the final countdown race for the Habitat Dirt Racing Series for 1996 at North Georgia Speedway near Chatsworth. Hello, race fans. This is Trace Ali along with Ozzy Altman. And right now, a whole season gets positioned into one race as every team gets ready for the final run for the Habitat Shootout coming up at Dixie Speedway. And this is the track where it's all got to come together. I'm telling you, 182 drivers have already qualified in 1996 in Habitat action for the 7th Annual Super Bowl of Dirt down at Dixie Speedway. And right now, we're at a third mile track in the North Georgia Mountains. Great place to close down the season. Track owner Ronnie Lipscomb and Rick Davenport, they've done a great job in promoting this facility. Great crowds turn out. And one thing that's peculiar about this track in Havatampa history, no driver has ever repeated in victory lane on the Havatampa Series. We'll see if that changes tonight. And, of course, to lead every single lap would be the dream of everyone racing tonight. But to get there, the crew chiefs of the top teams have made it possible for the successes or whatever's happened on the racetrack all season long. Let's take a look for just a moment at some of those top teams and their crew members and how they work it together. You've got a crew that works with you to make this car as right as you can get it, and they've done a marvelous job. You're sitting on a pole tonight. Let's talk a little bit about those crew members and what they mean to you, getting this whole effort for the Have a Tampa Race Series season. I've got two guys full-time. One of them, Todd Moger, he's been with me through most of my racing career, and a new guy we've hired along, Brian Leonberg, and uh, he's come on board with us, and, uh, you know, they do a real good job. You know, I pretty much uh, try to tell the guys, you know, what we need to do or whatever, and they make sure it gets done right, and, uh, you know, we had not had no mechanical failure all year long. Have a Tampa Series champion Scott Bloomquist and Ronnie Johnson racing near the top of the standings all season long also share the same crew. You know, pretty much the same guys work on my car and Scott's, and uh, kind of split up a little bit at the racetrack, but during the week it's the same people. Of course, you know, we've got... Barry Wright heads up the, the deal there to keep the cars at his shop, and uh, he pretty much oversees it, uh, you know, what all goes on and works on the cars, you know, at the track. Kevin Brown, you know, oversees the maintenance, does the fabrication, stuff like that. Scott Bratton, who does maintenance during the week, works on the cars at the track. Got our buddy Ray, he tries to uh, keep up with the tires, Scott's tires, especially at the track. He does all the washing and cleaning and everything at the shop. And, you know, all these guys can, can pretty much do a little bit of each other's jobs. And then sometimes I bring along some of the, maybe some of the guys that have helped me in the past, you know, when we get into a situation like we are here, you know, things are getting right down to these last two races, and you want to make sure you got plenty of help. Over in the 53 car, up-and-coming driver Ray Cook in the Habitat Race Series is sometimes his own crew chief. Gary Thompson's been the consistent one. He's been with us from start to finish, and... Uh, of course, we've had people come and go, you know, as the year went, but we've always had uh, David Devonport. He's always been with us, and uh, we've always usually got three or four going with us, and it's something we didn't used to have. Well, Trace, a lot of those crew chiefs that we talked to are right in the thick of things for lucrative paydays in the final Have a Tampa Dirt Racing Series point standings. Literally living and dying by how well those drivers do and caring just as deeply about who wins that race and how they get there. When we come back, though, we'll take a look at the heat race action before we get to tonight's final race. It was a bang-up job last night, and you're going to love the action. Stay with us with more Have a Tampa Television Series coverage when we return. The beautiful historical site of Captain Van's house 
near Chatsworth, Georgia, where North Georgia Speedway is ready to host the Havitapa Racing Series in its final countdown race right before the Havitapa shootout still to come at Dixie Speedway. Trace Ali again with Ozzy Altman and Ozzy. Last night, the heat race action, as I always say, was just full of surprises and excitement. A couple of drivers taking out some frustration on one another. Those four heat races setting the first 16 starters in tonight's 100 lapper, the 31st event of the 1996 Havitapa season that has 32 events total for the points championship. Man, action was very, very exciting. We saw a couple of surprises. Some drivers just out horsepowering their competitors to take the victory. Let's take a look and see how it unfolded last night at Chatsworth. The Havitapa Series turns them loose for heat race number one in North Georgia Speedway with Wendell Wallace on the pole and to the front very quickly with a G1 car from Pontotoc, Mississippi with Steve Russell chasing after Batesville, Arkansas's favorite son, at least in the Havitapa Dirt Racing Series, Wendell Wallace. Behind them, three wide goes Gary McPherson in the 40 car and Paul Timms in 84. Driving up from Martinsville, Indiana, the 71 car of Don O'Neill battles on the inside, trying to get himself qualified for the Havitapa shootout. The blue 6M car of Wendell Wallace pulls away now with about a 12-car lead over the G1 car driven by Steve Russell, who's making a great show for himself so far in the Havitapa series for the only the second race this season. Wendell Wallace, though, has him coming and going as he picks up the win in heat race number one, and the Batesville, Arkansas native now leads the gang into tonight's race on the pole. Wendell Wallace, Steve Russell, Don O'Neill, and Dwayne Hughes, the top four finishers in heat race one, moving up to the 100-lap feature. Heat race number two, tied for the national championship points, the double zero car of Freddie Smith sees open straight away on the back straight away while behind him the crowd gets together fighting for second, third, and fourth. Gar Dixon in the 60 car who just flew by on screen has pulled himself into second while Kenny Merchant from Ruston, Louisiana hustles the C-28 car trying to make for glory here towards the end of the season as he battles around the three car with Frank Thompson in it. The backup car to the 53 car as they get together in turn four. Kenny Merchant pays him no mind and continues to fly down the front straightaway keeping that line in turn one and two and holds that position against the three car with Frank Thompson behind him going on looking for more glory still ahead in this heat race. There's Buddy Morris in the 88 car, but out front, it's the double zero car of Freddie Smith that leads the way. With competition, of course, on the heels, it doesn't matter anymore as Freddie takes the win here in heat race number two at North Georgia Speedway, followed by Gar Dixon, Skip Arp, and Johnny Verdon in fourth. In heat race number three, inside, Scott Bloomquist, the reigning series champion for two years running in the 18 car, shows him how it's done as he gets through turn one and two with Clint Smith in another four to the one car running second. Hard after them, it's the 12 car of Mike Lee in the 17 car of Dale McDowell going into and around and out of turn four side by side and keeping that momentum as they run through turn one and two. Scott Bloomquist, smooth as silk, has Clint Smith, though, now beginning to challenge as he moves to the inside, coming out of turn four. On that lap, it looked like he might have had the pass. He stays low on the groove, finds the moisture, and for the first time, pulls ahead of Scott Bloomquist enough to maintain the lead and take the spot. Bloomquist is now second, but fights hard and fast, staying to the high side in turn one and two. But it's definitely Clint Smith who's pulled away in the Dunbinson Ford out of North Carolina and now has the lead in heat race number three. And for some reason, Scott Bloomquist continues to decline in his approach as they go through the turn. Clint Smith has built that lead and now leads by a good seven or eight cars while Scott Bloomquist continues to try to find a way to move to the front. But it's Clint Smith who takes the win and beats the big dog himself, Scott Bloomquist, in second, followed by Mike Lee and Dale McDowell. All four of them moving to the front. That puts Scott Bloomquist in seventh starting spot in the race tonight. Heat race number four. It's the five car of Ronnie Johnson out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, the Bloomquist other team car. And to the outside, losing ground quickly, was Stan Massey, who went a little too wide in turn two, slips a little bit, and now has a battle on his hands as the eight car of David Payne comes up under him and goes for it. Back in the pack, though, the 21 car of Jerry Summers out of Salem, Alabama, and the 98 car of Lee J. Haddock from Ruston, Louisiana, began to put on a show back battling for fifth 
the two rookies of the four big gun rookies are really piling it on here as they come out of turn four showing no quarter and plenty of quarter panels back to back side to side as the 98 car grabs the lead but 21 is remarkably determined to get back into the 98 car comes back after him fighting for that position even though they're battling for fifth this is almost like watching the battle for first Jerry Summers continues to maneuver rather smoothly, keeping good control on the 21 car, but again, going deep into turn three and coming out of four, he almost tags the 98 car again. Back up front, the battle for first and second with Ronnie Johnson in the five car continues, but Stan Massey has made up the ground he lost on the initial lap when he slid high in turn two and gets a little bit almost into the five car as they go super smooth match for match, tire for tire through turn one and two. Down the straightaway, here comes the 98 car, now stepping into the 29 car who impedes his progress while the 98 car continues to try to fly. Again, back and forth, the battles go on the track. Again in first, the five car gets a tap this time for the 22 car. He makes the move inside, stays low, and grabs the position. Ronnie Johnson now falls back to second, but starts his comeback immediately on the front straightaway. But the 22 car, after plenty of tangle with the number five car, has pulled away, gathers about a five car lead, and now has the low inside groove as the track begins to come to him, while behind him that pack continues to stack with 98 and 21 still going at it for fifth. David Payne's in front of him, just hoping the two of them will not get close enough to bother his particular progress as he holds on to fourth. But again, the 98 car now high on the outside, sees the 21 car put the nose on the inside low and go just past him, but they battle back while up ahead, Stan Massey, who grabbed it away from Ronnie Johnson, has taken the win and will start on the outside row of row two in tonight's race. Ronnie Johnson, Gary McPherson, and David Payne, the finalists. Wendell Wallace, Freddie Smith, Stan Massey, and Clint Smith, those are the guys leading the gang to the green flag tonight at Chatsworth. And, of course, Freddie Smith, who sits on the outside pole, is tied with Scott Bloomquist, twice champion in 94 and 95. They've still got a lot to say about who's going to be the champion before it's all over. We talked to them earlier. We're pretty tight on the championship there. At, uh, we'd like to win it, but, you know, Trace, if we don't win it, you know, we've got a good second place, and uh, we, uh, we ran hard this year, and uh, we've done the best we could. But, uh, you know, Scott's hard to beat, you know, and uh, we're just sitting in there and trying to beat him. He's never had anybody to really run with him, you know, uh, the old half a Tampa deal. So we're hoping to make this thing have a good shot here in the next, uh, this week and next week. Series champion Scott Bloomquist agrees that Freddie Smith is at a good competitive level, but he'd like the competition on the racetrack alone to determine the championship. From the outside looking in, you know, people can uh, can get a little bit excited about the point battle, I guess. I, I have a hard time with it because of the way it's been created when we had such a big lead and and uh, had a judgment call take all our points away from us that ended up making this a tight race now. So, you know, I, I still sit and wonder what the next judgment call is going to be to make sure that I'm not the champion again. So it's really the emphasis on the championships uh, dwindled a lot in my mind. But, you know, we can see... Uh, that we've won the most races this year in this series. We've run the best all year. Uh, we feel like, you know, we feel like we're going to go win the shootout. We feel like we're really running good. I think that this race here tonight is going to be good. Uh, you know, we got off a little on tires last night, but I think we're going to be really good tonight. So, you know, we just, it's a tight battle, but, you know, uh, it's not a justified tight battle. So I, I can't get into that. So those are the final thoughts and the words from the two champions in their own right. Scott Bloomquist and Freddie Smith, both racing hard to be the final champion in the Have a Tampa Race Series for 1996. Trace is the tightest points battle that the Have a Tampa Dirt Racing Series has seen in seven years. Two races to go going into this event. I wouldn't want to be between those two guys going into turns one and two. Or involved with any of the other guys, because they're all great racers. And we're going to take a look at the final lineup when we come back with Have a Tampa Series television coverage right here. Stay with us. The Have a Tampa Dirt Racing Series is about to get the show on the road here at North Georgia Speedway in Chatsworth, Georgia. As we've had the introduction on the front straightaway, let's take a look now for our television viewing audience. Inside row number one, Wendell Wallace with a fast time here last night from Batesville, Arkansas on the 6M car. Outside the pole, starting second, it's Freddie Smith from Knoxville, Tennessee in the double zero car. Inside row number two, starting third, it's the number one car, Clint Smith, former champion in 93 from Griffin, Georgia. 
the 22 car outside him from Stan Massey in Mableton, Georgia. Back in the fifth starting position on the inside of row three, Pontotoc, Mississippi driver Steve Russell in the red and blue G1 car. Gar Dixon out of Flintstone, Georgia, has his multicolored number 64 on the outside of row number three. Scott Bloomquist will start seventh this evening inside of row four as he and Freddie Smith are tied for the points championship. Entering this race, Bloomquist from Mooresburg, Tennessee, the two-time defending champion. Alongside of him in the eighth starting position, Ronnie Johnson, his teammate, out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, in the black number five. That's the Bloomquist row. Starting in row number five, it's Don O'Neill out of Martinsville, Indiana, who's now qualified into the shootout. He's in the 71 car, starting ninth. Next to him on the outside, Skip Art from Georgetown, Tennessee, car 31 in 10th starting spot. Inside row six, Mike Lee from Ulatawa, Tennessee, in the 12 car. And the 29 car, Gary McPherson from Dalton, Georgia, starts 12. Starting back in the seventh row in 13th, it's Dwayne Hughes out of Dalton, Georgia in the black number 40. He had a monster run here earlier in the year, finishing second. He'll start alongside leading rookie contender Johnny Burton out of Russellville, Arkansas in that GRT house car number 66. Dale McDowell, now living in Rossville, Georgia, has his Dover Cylinder head ride starting in 15th. And alongside of him, the youngster out of Murphy, North Carolina, David Payne in the white number 8. And starting in, in the 17th spot, Charlie Hughes, longtime favorite, big name in dirt track racing from Dalton, North Carolina. I'm sorry, Dalton, Georgia, <laughs> excuse me. In the 39 car inside row 9. Outside, it's Ray Cook from Murphy, North Carolina in the 53 car. Currently uh, a fifth in points in the Habitat for Dirt Racing Series. In row 10, it's the 84 car, Paul Thames from Georgetown, Tennessee. Outside in 20th starting spot of row 10, it's C28, Kenny Merchant from Ruston, Louisiana. Looking back in 21st starting position, a former winner of Habitat Action here at North Georgia Speedway, the Red J1 of Rock Spring, Georgia's John Jones. Former Habitat shootout winner, Buddy Morris from Rome, Georgia, has his white number 88 lined up in 22nd starting position. The final row, row 12 on the inside, 19 year old campaigner from Vicksburg, Mississippi. It's Bob McCool in the 57J. And alongside of him, the Rustin Rocket, Lee J. Haddix, another young campaigner for that rookie award out of Ruston, Louisiana. And that's the top 24 getting ready to start tonight. This is Trace Alley along with Ozzy Altman here to call the action tonight. Brought to you by Ford Commercial Trucks. Of course, makers of the all-new Ford Aeromax 113. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is the big race, the last uh, of the regular season events, if you will before we head to Dixie and the final shootout for 1996. This has been a hot, very hotly contested race all year long. Right now, we're tied dead even between Freddie Smith and Scott Bloomberg. I can only look around and see these fans up on their feet. They've come from all over this weekend to see this event. Race 31 of the 32 race season. Not only the Drivers' Championship at stake, Trace, but a lot of valuable money for those top 10 finishing positions, plus the Chassis Manufacturers Award, Rookie of the Year Award, all kind of bragging rights and money up for grabs here tonight. Virtually everything is up for grabs at this point, and really and truly the National Championship will not be decided tonight, even though we're going to see one heck of a race, and obviously Scott Bloomquist has got his work cut out for him, and Freddie Smith wants to make darn sure he doesn't advance on him in the points. But, of course, it's up to Wendell Wallace to lead them all tonight, and he has a super fast car. 13.8 in the heat races. He was timed per lap last night in that 6M car. Unbelievable amounts of energy. And, of course, Scott Bloomquist showing you his stuff right here as he whips around into uh, turn two and goes down the back straightaway, testing out the uh, power of that 750 horse Ford-powered 18 car. Boy, is that a beautiful race car. A lot of money up for grabs. The series is already several weeks or several races past cleared or went over the top of the $1.5 million total first payout. Actually, it'll be nearer $2 million when it's over. 52 cars showed up this weekend, Trace, for the next to the last event. A lot of drivers trying to get in the shootout. And as they wind it into turn three, it looks like we're about to start. It's up to Wendell Wallace to get him across that double white line. Once he's past the first one, he can slam it into gear, and there they go. The final flight is launched for the Habitat for Dirt Racing Series as we head for the shootout at Dixie in 1996. And Freddie Smith has pulled to the front, immediately to the front, with Clint Smith quickly moving in behind the car, the 6M car of baseball Arkansas's Wendell Wallace. Clint Smith making a fast move from the inside there, and the 22 car Stan Massey coming with him. There is Smith. He'll pull up in the third just 
ahead of Massey. Blomquist racing side by side for Steve Russell. That's for fifth. Blomquist tries to tuck it way down on the bottom there, Trace, and he's trying to make that low groove work. Scott Blomquist said early tonight in another interview that it would be on the low side of the racetrack. He might concentrate, and he's doing it right now. He also said the hard tire might be the big answer in this race tonight as he battles through turn four with Stan Massey on the high side in the 22 car. Stan Massey, a long-time dirt track veteran. Now, he'll try to hold off Blomquist for that fourth position. Blomquist brings the black 18 underneath him. Now, he'll tuck back in line down the back straightaway. Blomquist, although not looking terribly strong at this moment, may be relying on those tires to heat up a little bit. The last couple of races, Scott has said he was expecting those tires to heat up, and he looked for long periods of run. He's not looking for cautions. There he is. He'll tuck in behind Massey as they work through turns three and four. Massey slings that rear end out a little bit and stands back in the gas. Stan Massey, two career, have a Tampa wins. And now look back up front. Wendell Wallace starts to close down on Freddie Smith. Wendell Wallace has brought it back up. The baseball Arkansas pole sitter is back into the second place. And Freddie Smith is still looking very strong. He's got himself right to the front, as we said, real quickly by going from the outside. Wendell Wallace fell back just a little bit. But Bloomquist has made a pass. He's now to the high side and going around the Stan Massey car of 20. They kind of swapped positions there. Blumquist took that high line, and Massey tried to work the low line, and it seemed more effective for Blumquist there as he slings it out near the wall down the back shoot. One of the things that several drivers mentioned is seeing that wall when you get up here in the North Georgia Speedway. It's a little tough when you get close to know where you are. There's a little bit of cushion up there, and you got to be careful not to run into it and put your car in that wall. Here they come on the speed shot of it. You see that gap is narrowed tremendously. Wendell Wallace now actually taking a look underneath Freddie Smith as they work down the back straightaway. You see the speed shot all the drivers motoring down the front straight. We're averaging well over 100 miles an hour. That means on the straightaways, we've got ourselves pushed way over 110. Now, Wendell Wallace is pushing inside of the 6M Monday trucking car, trying to make that move. Two Camaros, two GRTs racing hard as we go in turn three around turn four. Wendell is beginning to seek out the low side. It worked well for him last night. Wendell has had an exceptional year this year. He's already won three Hamatampa events, giving him four for his career. He's done real good, and he's looking for another win here tonight. Clint Smith, the 93 champion for the Habitat Dirt Racing Series, of course, continues to pour away here in the early going and looking pretty strong himself. Last night, he beat Scott Bloomquist in a heat race that was certainly the talk of the town, and he looks just as good tonight. The G1 car you're watching to the left of your screen now being challenged very heavily by Ronnie Johnson in the 5 car, who slips a little to the low side but comes back high on the front straightaway as they enter turn 1 and 2. Russell putting on one of the best shows he's done in years in that C.J. Rayburn car, now running the G1 right down the back uh, high side of the back straightaway and into turn three and around four. But Ronnie Johnson sticking to the mat and coming right with him. That's the battle for six, and they continue. We got one car spinning, young Bub McCool with problems over in turn two. There you see the yellow 57J car of McCool. He started on the last row here this evening after getting in in a last chance consolation race. So McCool with a little bit of difficulty here this evening. McCool now will back his GRT chassis Camaro around and start heading in the right direction. 15 laps are shown complete in this event, Trace. 57J is Bub McCool, and for that fact, right now, we have our caution, as he did do that spin out again. Not having the greatest close here at the end of the year, but a heck of a show so far. It's time to take a break, though. We'll be back with more action at North Georgia Speedway when we come back with a Have a Tampa Dirt Racing Series television coverage brought to you by Ford Commercial Trucks. Coming back with more in a moment. We return to North Georgia Speedway as the Habitat Series now has their 15 laps underway. The Iskey Race Cams update brought to you by Iskey Race Cams. Race with a legend. Double zero, Freddie Smith at the front, followed by 6M Wendell Wallace, the one car of Clint Smith, the 18 car of Scott Bloomquist, 22 of Stan Massey, and the G1 car from Pontotoc, Mississippi, Steve Russell. That's the way it stands so far after 15 very hotly contested laps and already several changes except for the lead. Freddie Smith has owned every lap of it so far. He's coming back to the start line. He's accelerating and once again the Have a Tampa Series is loose right before you here with Have a Tampa Series television coverage. Coming down the front straightaway. A battle definitely ensuing with cars trying to go two and three wide as we watch them pass in now into turn three and four. Here they come on the outside. In the low side it looks like Clint Smith still trying to put a move on Wendell Wallace who has had the fastest car up until just a few minutes ago. Well Trace they don't run rear view mirrors 
but these guys can sense them bearing down behind them. Clint Smith knows that Bloomquist Ford is coming. Clint Smith wants to go ahead and clear the Wallace machine, but Wallace, a tough competitor, he's concentrating on forward motion on Freddie Smith. Right, the double zero of Freddie Smith, the sixth uh, end car, went to Wallace, the Camaros, and behind them, the Fords of Clint Smith, number one, and Scott Bloomquist in 18. A battle that's been raging this year, and we might even call it the Scott Bloomquist rage for success in a Ford this year. Here's the 18 car looking very good coming out of turn two, and as you see, he's got no problem maintaining the same line repeatedly. Behind him, of course, the other car's trying to make it into the action tonight, but up front, it's the 6M car, Wendell Wallace, all the way so far, hanging in there with Freddie Smith as they come now deep and high, uh, or should say right up to the high side of turn four, down the front straightaway very fast, and now into the back straightaway, again, keeping in the distance as they grow about three cars in length apart. Well, Trace, we've talked to Freddie Smith and Scott Lundquist about this points battle, and both of those drivers know how to do one thing well. That's stand on the gas and work their way through traffic. To drive a conservative race here would not work. They know they're going to have to race hard. There you see Steve Russell and Skip Hart. Skip Hart coming out of Georgetown, Tennessee, was very confident tonight. Didn't even pull the car out of the trailer until literally before the race. He must have had the setup figured out he wanted. He will be a factor as we continue to race here tonight. The G1 car is on the track. We're looking very quickly. We it's have a spin out in turn one. It's Kenny Merchant, and we have a damaged Buddy Morris in the 88 car also. I didn't uh, see quite all the action. If perhaps you caught it, Ozzy, or Several cars got together over there in turn number one, Trace. It was Buddy Morris and Kenny Merchant. Lee J. Haddix was in that mix as they were racing at the back of the pack. It looks like no major damage to any of the cars as now they continue to work around as we're under the caution with just past the 20-lap 20, 20 mark of this 100-lapper. 20 laps is complete, and we're going to stick right here with it for a few minutes. It looks like uh, they're going to have to push Scott Bloomquist to a start. There he is out of turn two. He is not running. There's something wrong there. Apparently, he'll go Frank, to the outside. He pit. is going off the racetrack. The crowd is just going nutty on us right here and now. Unbelievable. Scott Bloomquist's car has stopped cold. He's been pushed off the racetrack and is not in the race right this moment. And I'm not so sure that it might not have been a drive shaft here, and that could be a major league problem for Bloomquist. We'll get the official word. I didn't see a drive shaft on the track, but Bloomquist without power being pushed down the back straightaway to the external pit, and that would be a major blow for Freddie Smith in the points chase. A major hit for Freddie Smith, you might say. <laughs> well, Freddie Smith, of course, now sitting really in the catbird seat as he sits up front. Scott Bloomquist right out of the race, and that means no matter what else goes on tonight, Freddie Smith will finish a minimum of one position ahead of Scott Bloomquist. We're not sure if he's coming back. We're listening for Habitat officials uh, to check on Scott Bloomquist to see if we can find out if he is just temporarily out or if that is a final one, as Ozzy was calling there. If it's the drive shaft, it's a major problem. Scott is getting out of the car. He is leaving the car. That's not the sign we were looking for. Scott Bloomquist apparently is out of the race. The crew is uh, apparently raising the rear end. There's, in fact, I see Barry Wright himself crawling out of the car right out there in the pits trying to figure out what's wrong. It is apparently a drive shaft problem or something similar, as you were saying, Ozzy. Bad news for the Bloomquist camp, Trace. It was indeed a drive shaft, so that'll do it, apparently, as they continue to work back there. But that would just about end all hopes of Bloomquist here at North Georgia Speedway tonight. Scott Bloomquist will more than likely try to get that thing fixed, Ozzy, to get back in the race. Whatever points he can salvage tonight, I'm sure he'll try to gather them in if he can. The one bad thing about it for Bloomquist is that he is the first car to fall out of the event. So that would give Freddie Smith a tremendous boost and spread on the points chase as we enter the final event in two weeks down at Dixie Speedway at the Havitam Shootout. Ready to go. Freddie Smith is about to turn the line. Here we come. We look down the front straightaway. The flag is up. And green up next to the Ford banner as they come flying down the front straightaway. Freddie Smith in the lead, but quickly challenged low side by the 6M car of Wendell Wallace. Wendell's tires seem to get better as it gets cooled down, and he grips that track a little harder. Maybe he's working that soft tire issue like he did at Little Rock not too many weeks ago, Ozzy. He sure tried to pull the trigger. Here we see Skip Hart. Ronnie Johnson goes beneath Hart with Steve Russell just in front of those. They'll close in on the fourth place car of Massey. The swap of speed goes on there with the 31 car of Arp and the five car of Ronnie Johnson. And uh, right ahead of a Mississippi uh, driver, G1, of course, uh, Steve Russell trying to hold a pull off. They're battling hard there, the 31 five car. That's going to be a major battle to consider for the rest of the evening. If Bloomquist can't get back, Ronnie Johnson has got to carry the Bloomquist team colors to as high a finish as possible here tonight. 
Roddy Johnson, another driver looking for his first win. Here we see the battle between Gar Dixon and Johnny Burton as Johnny, it rages on. Johnny Burton blasting to the low side there. He's finally worked himself under uh, Flintstone George's Gar Dixon in the 60 car, and it looks like he's holding on to it. There's Arp. He'll try to close up on Steve Russell again as they work through turns one and two. They're running in fifth, sixth, and seventh. That is Russell. He's your fifth place car. Now we look back and see several other competitors. The cars all look incredibly even so far, at least up towards the front and even back here in the middle of the pack as we see Johnny Burton in 61 leading Dale McDowell in 17 and the 53 car of Ray Cook. You're watching on screen right now to the right. Johnny Burton has finally gotten himself up a couple times inside Gar Dixon, but Gar Dixon continues to motor around. The five car is slipping back. Looks like he just got passed by the 31 car. The 31 car has made the move. It's Skip Barr from Georgetown. Now all over again on the backside of the G1. Ronnie's still holding on, coming back again. Although he was slightly under Skip, Skip didn't quite pull too far ahead. Actually, he was in the lead. It looked like Johnson had to get out of the gas because it looks like he slowed dramatically for a minute. But there he is working right back, trying to get his way around the arc machine as he closes up on him in turn four. Well, as we referred to earlier, Ozzy, Skip Arp keeps moving back and forth across the track, trying to find that one spot that's going to let him shoot like a rocket past the G1 car. And Rocky's trying to find that spot where he ain't going to be. 37 laps now complete trace. Freddie Smith continues to lead. We look back to Gar Dixon and Johnny Burton. They continue to work behind Mike Lee, another driver who made it into the shootout. He's just out of your picture right now. But Burton, the leading rookie contender, working with Flintstone George's Gar Dixon. Lee from Ottawa, Tennessee, right in front of him in the red and white number 12, is in the shootout. There's Charlie Hughes, the caution 39. on the speedway, and Hughes off the pace. Hughes, of course, one of the legendary drivers, one of the top names that's raced against the likes of Jody Ridley and others in the past and still out here racing, putting on a good show tonight. Front, front, uh, the right front, definitely a problem. We can see with our television cameras as he sits out there by the pit road out of turn three. He's got a serious problem and can I even hardly turn the car at this point? Looks like that spindle's gone right there. Right now, he's trying to drive in, and that right front is completely pointed to the outside of the car. We're going to take a break for Habitat for Dirt Racing Series television coverage. We'll be back with more in a moment. Here we go, back to North Georgia Speedway. Scott Bloomquist has fixed the drive shaft. He's back in the race at the tail end of the entire field tonight. A very unusual position, rarely seen with the Bloomquist racing team out of Mooresburg, Tennessee. We're about to go green once again. Freddie Smith has led all the laps and continues as he uh, continues his assault right down the front straightaway through turn one and two. And again, Wendell Wallace bringing the baseball Arkansas Monday trucking team to the second place spot as they all come flying after each other. There is Freddie Smith. He's got about a car length advantage. Look at Skip Hart working right up against the wall. He still tries to close it on Steve Russell, and he's got Ronnie Johnson dogging him all the way. That is definitely a magic act going there as the 31 car is working that wall so close and so tight tonight. Amazing control on that 750 horsepower late model. As the rest of the field comes through turn four, we watch them stream through two and even three wide. There's Bloomquist now putting a battle on with the back markers there. Coming after, it looks like uh, the David Payne car trying to work to the inside and make some distance. Tough pull on the racetrack tonight. There's no doubt about it. Freddie Smith is in the catbird seat and riding hard with Wendell Wallace still coming after him in second. Look at Dale McDowell and Ray Cook battle for position through turns three and four. Super battle right there, that's for sure. Look at Ray Cook hold it tight, just tacked to the racetrack there on the low side, and Dale McDowell just absolutely powerful on the high side. Both cars staying dead even. It makes you wonder which is the stronger car, but here's Dale McDowell holding it off, trying to get a little bit further on the high side. Each time they go through the turn, he's finally gotten himself to the front, it looks like, and if he can keep that line He's got Ray Cook nailed on this one and will take that position away. But Ray Cook is holding up and not letting go, not for a second. Dale McDowell has seven career Hamilton Dirt Racing Series victories, one of Dirt Tracks Racing's uh, hard chargers. There is Steve Russell, Skip Arp, and Ronnie Johnson. It looked for a minute ago, Trace, that Arp was going to try to use the low group after trying to work around the outside of Russell, but they continue to run right there nose to tail in fifth, six, and seven. But after every couple of laps of that kind of an attempt, Ozzy, he continues to go right back to the top side. And as you saw there, the right rear nearly got into the wall that time. He's working very close to that wall on the front and back straightaway. And, of course, G1's trying to keep him off by using the wall as well to keep him from passing on the high side, which, again, appears to be the place Arp thinks he's got the move. Scott 
Bluequist has returned to the race, but fights from the back. And Freddie Smith, the double zero car, is way out front. There was Skip Barb, almost in the wall again. G1 still holding him on. I'm telling you, Trace, he has gotten precariously close to that concrete again as he raises up the dust right up against the wall, but he still manages to hold off Ronnie Johnson. And he's also staying within inches of the wall and not touching it, as you can tell. We've seen no sparks fly from Skip Barb's car so far. Look at the switch around there. Here comes Freddie Smith. We're back to the front again. Wendell Wallace continues his assault from second place, but it's still the double zero car of Freddie Smith rolling right down the racetrack, eating up the laps, going for $10,000, and another win, and the final attempt so far before the shootout for Freddie Smith to move for the first time in 1996 into the points championship lead all alone ahead of Scott Bloomquist. It's going his way. There is Arp as he continues to try to take the fifth position from Russell. Closes right up behind the Pontotoc, Mississippi driver. He'll now step up in the banking in turns three and four. Now rumble down the front straightaway. Skip Arp with a good run, but he can't get around the fifth place car. Trace, we've got 30 laps to go, and as you see, the leader has now worked into lap traffic. This could be a critical phase in the race. Wendell Wallace is right there lapping his chops. He thinks that maybe he can thread the needle and get around Smith with this traffic in here. And look out for the third and fourth place machines of Clint Smith and Stan Massey. They'll try to take advantage of this as now Freddie Smith goes underneath David Payne. That's right, but to their credit, Buddy Morris and David Payne, the 88 and the 8 cars respectively, have pulled a little bit to the high side. They're letting the leaders go through, which is very smart racing on everybody's part. And the 17 can, cars continuing his battle back there in fifth, uh, sixth position with the 53 car of Ray Cook. Again, a very strong battle. That one's still to be decided before this evening is out. But again, as we said, here comes Scott Bloomquist. He's still in the race, but he's not in a good position. He's slowing down. He's slowing. He's not going as fast as he wants to go. Definitely having problems with his car tonight after being out early in the race. There's Gar Dixon, Mike Lee, and Dale McDowell and Ray Cook. They still run inside by Side trace. The Flintstone Georgia driver then the 60 car has continued to battle a battle for himself, holding pretty much where he started this evening, but Mike Lee in that 12 car is real strong, and again, he's working the low side. We're getting into the waning stages. Now the battles really begin as the low side groove becomes all that more important and harder to fend off those that want to try to pass you beneath. Now, some of that extra power, some of those tires are beginning to do their magic, and we've got a tap on the front straightaway. The G1 car gets caught up with Skip Arp but Arp manages in the path him anyway. Even though they made contact, Arp has taken the lead over G1. He slips away, not the lead. I'm sorry, he's moved himself ahead by one position with Ronnie Johnson coming up. Skip Arp now into fifth after a momentary contact that sent his car and the rear end of it into the air. 80-something laps out of the books, 83 now done, and we continue to battle. Mike Lee in the 12th car. There's the 17-car uh, uh, Del McDowell staying to the high side, trying to hold him back. And Ronnie Johnson now fights with the 66 car of Johnny Burton trying to hold his own. That's the 7th and 8th place battle between Ronnie Johnson and Johnny Burton. Now, you know, we talked about Freddie Smith working that traffic earlier. We thought maybe Wendell Wallace or Clint Smith could have closed down on him. The veteran, Freddie Smith, showed just how to work traffic. He kind of got ahead of him, and Wallace and Clint Smith are now having problems negotiating lap traffic. And you have to wonder if Buddy Morris, who's also kind of one of those crafty old veterans, might have said, hey, there's one of me. I'm letting him through. <laughs> Ronnie Johnson steps up the banking, and he'll go to the outside of his teammate, Scott Blundquist, who is many laps down. Johnson tries to close down, as now Dale McDowell has cleared Ray Cook, and he'll go to work on Gar Dixon. Boy, is he working him over, too, on the back straightaway. He keeps running the line that's pretty high to the wall, but comes down to the low side inside, moves very well, but then again quickly gets back to the outside. The outside groove seems to be the one that's set up, as you can see the black on the track from the tire setting in. That high side of the track seems to be where the majority of cars are going. Nobody seems to be able to get much outside of that and keep up their speed. That's why we haven't seen the passes yet. We've got some action on the right. Trouble in turn number two. Johnny Burton spinning in turn two after getting together with Scott Bloomquist. Uh, Bloomquist was able to go on, but Burton's car spins here on lap number 87. And caution does wave with 13 laps to go. That's it right now for the 66 V car, who was putting on a grand performance there. Unfortunately, that drops him back in the race and will slip him to the back of the front leader pack. And we'll come back and look and see where Johnny Burton and the rest of the field are going to line up when we restart here from North Georgia Speedway with Habitat a Dirt Racing Series television coverage. Coming back with 87 laps in the book, 13 to go. 
Gibbs as they get back underway. There's only 13 laps left for tonight's race at North Georgia Speedway, and Freddie Smith knows it could be his, but Wendell Wallace, Clint Smith, and Stan Massey are still back there, all ready to challenge one final time. Five laps away for Freddie Smith as the battle ensues behind him. The 71 car there, the 53 car. Don O'Neill and Ray Cook still battling back there for position as well, with Dale McDowell still holding the both off. And here's Gar Dixon, still strong after oh so many laps. Gar Dixon started at six. He stayed right up at the top ten throughout the event. The multi-colored number 60 car of Dixon, a strong run. He'll try to hold off Dale McDowell. We're closing in on the checkers as Freddie Smith goes beneath the flag stand with just three laps to go. Three laps to go, and of course, Wendell Wallace has got to make a show of it. Here is his last chance. He's only got two more circuits after they complete this lap to catch up with Freddie Smith. Is he going to find the low side? Here comes Wendell Wallace rolling with two laps to go. Coming after Freddie Smith trying to make a final run on the leader, the 700-plus winner in one of the great historical moments of his career as he races to the front here at Havitampa's North Georgia Speedway. With one lap to go, the white flag is out. Freddie Smith is on his way looking for another victory, not only in 1996, but a giant number seven in 1996 that could put him in front for the championship. He's now taken the lead away from Scott Bloomquist for the championship and finishes the race. Number one tonight in the double zero with Freddie Smith followed by Wendell Wallace as they compete and win $10,000. What a turn of events here at North Georgia Speedway. The legendary Freddie Smith picking up his seventh Have a Tampa win of the season, and he'll definitely work his way into the points lead as a championship chase, taking a dramatic turn here tonight. Scott Blomquist with mechanical woes. Freddie Smith, the man on the road to a championship in 1996. The traditional find all the moisture you can on the racetrack as the uh, double zero car heads to the scales. He's making it over tonight. He's making the final step up there to make sure he's legal, and it looks like it's official. Freddie Smith gets the handshake from the officials there. He's got himself win number seven at North Georgia Speedway. Here he is, folks. Give him a hand. It's the double zero car of Freddie Smith, winner tonight at North Georgia Speedway with a habit have a dirt racing series as we head to the shootout. We'll talk to him on the front straightaway in just a moment series rocking and roaring to a track near you and smoking to the finish Freddie Smith comes out of the car here at North Georgia Speedway. The crafty veteran has done it again. It's win number seven for 1996, and Freddie Smith is $10,000 richer. And on top of that, he is now the official points leader for the Have a Tampa Dirt Racing Series with one race to go, the Have a Tampa Shootout. Let's go downstairs and talk to Freddie Smith. You started on the pole, and you stayed there all night long, Freddie. Here at North Georgia Speedway, where they say it's going to be a double groove track and everything, you, Stan Massey, and Clint Smith were running one, two, three. Sometimes it's almost so close we couldn't tell you apart. Tell us about the race. Well, you know, I, I got a good little jump on there, Wendell, on the start. You know, we rolled off, and the high side was a little bit better than his, his on the bottom, so, you know, I got a better bite than he did, so, you know, we got the lead. You know, if he's got the lead, he'd probably been the same way. You know, he'd probably won the race, and uh, I would want to run second. But, you know, you don't ever know that. And, and uh, it, it was just our choice to take the outside, you know, and, and that's the way it, what happened there. Freddie Smith wins again for 1996, the second appearance of the Have a Tampa Dirt Racing Series at North Georgia Speedway, picking up $10,800 tonight. He was followed by Wendell Wallace, the first four to finish of Clint Smith in third, and Stan Massey in fourth. In fifth, it was Skip Arp followed by the G1 car driven by Steve Russell. In seventh, it was Ronnie Johnson, and in eighth, it was Gar Dixon. In ninth, Don O'Neill from Martinsville, Indiana, followed in tenth by Dale McDowell. Eleventh is Ray Cook, and twelfth is John Jones. In thirteenth, it's Mike Lee, followed by Gary McPherson, Paul Thames, and weight on racing Burt Transmission Rookie of the Year, Johnny Burton in sixteenth. In seventeenth, it's Bub McCool, followed by Buddy Morris, David Payne, and Lee J. Haddox. And in 21st, Scott Bloomquist, finishing after a broken drive shaft in 21st tonight, followed by Dwayne Hughes, Charlie Hughes, and Kenny.